Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. Look, I know I look like crap. I'm having a hard time. I don't know if you can tell that I'm not having a hard time. That's a real exaggeration. I don't know if you can tell, but my eyes are actually a bit swollen and they're like a little bit, they're better now, but they've been really wrinkly and I've got like a lot of inflammation. I don't know what it's from. So I'm trying to do as little as possible with my skincare. I'm trying to put water on my face as little as possible. So I'm trying to be as gentle with it as possible. I haven't got ready for the day yet. So <laughs> today I just want to sit down and take it easy. Well, this isn't going to be easy, but I want to talk about times that brands almost got canceled. Well, they kind of did, but you know what cancellation means nowadays? It doesn't mean anything. And the what are, in my opinion, avoidable reasons, really? Stupid reasons? Well, they're not stupid. They're stupid on the brand's behalf. And I'm just going to do a very gentle skincare routine whilst I'm doing that in my fleece. So first of all, as I said, I'm trying to avoid water because water can really dry out the already irritated, dried out, puffy skin under my eyes. But I will be using Bioderm as my cellar water. This is super gentle. This brand and this product in particular is made for those with really, really sensitive skin and basically as a water replacement. So you can leave it on your skin as well. So I'm just going to apply that to one of Starface's decompostable cotton pads and just cleanse my skin, being very gentle around the eye. You can see that I also picked up my skin here because I thought a black piece of fluff was a blackhead that I couldn't remove. You can also see that I picked up my skin here because I'm a fucking idiot. I had a tiny spot, a tiny, tiny spot that no one would have noticed, but now it's going to scar because I picked it. I am not having the best time with my skin recently and it's all my fault. So who knows the brand Jo Malone? I'm pretty sure we all do. I think their fragrances are almost iconic, especially here in the UK because they are almost like a UK heritage brand or a brand from the UK with a lot of heritage. But do you know back in 2020, they were pretty much canceled. You no, know, a lot of their fragrances are inspired by um, UK culture, the landscapes here, artists. But do you know back in 2020, they were pretty much canceled because of how they treated one of the celebrity faces of their brand. And this I completely missed. I don't know how I missed this because this was a big story. Back in 2020, they announced that British actor John Boyega was going to become the first male global face of the brand. And it was a perfect match in my opinion. He was already an established actor. He was in Attack the Block, which was huge here in the UK. And then he was in the Star Wars trilogy, trilogy sequel. So by 2020, he was not only known in the UK, but worldwide as well. And as I said, he wasn't just the face of Joe Malone. He was a global ambassador, global. So along with the company Joe Malone London, and I say that and you'll hear why, he um, produced and directed and pretty much wrote this incredible advert that kind of shows you going into his memories, growing up in London, living in Peckham, growing up Nigerian in London, all those memories he made with his family and his culture. You can tell it was a piece of film that was really, really special to him and personal. And he put a lot into this and it was so well received that it did actually win an award. And this ad was reshot for the Chinese market with a famous Chinese actor. And usually I'd be like, okay, cool. Like obviously you have your different celebrities around the world. So you kind of have your different global ambassadors or um, country ambassadors, I guess you can say. But here's the thing, as I said, John Bodega wasn't just the face of UK Joe Malone, he was the global ambassador and he didn't only appear in this advert, it was his advert, it was his story directed and produced by him. So once they finished filming with him, without Bodega's knowledge, they then went to China, reshot the advert, some scenes like pretty much scene to scene, copying the transitions, the artistic styling, his art direction, shooting it with an entirely new cast. And not only did they erase Bodega and his whole culture and his whole past and history and art artistry here, but they did this without his knowledge. They did him without even knowing that this is what they were gonna do. He only found out when he saw Joe Malone's tweet about it. Can you imagine how pissed off you'd be? They'd literally copied your work that you had been involved with that is about you. He wasn't just the face, this was about him, this advert. However, after stepping down from his role as a global ambassador, he had this to say, he pretty much perfectly sums up everything I'm trying to say. He says that the decision to replace my campaign in China by using my concepts and substituting a local brand ambassador for me without even my consent or prior notice was wrong. While many brands understandably use a variety of global and local ambassadors, dismissively trading out one's culture this way is something I cannot condone. 
It's back to back, but I assure you this will be dealt with swiftly. I don't have time for nonsense. Joe Malone London very swiftly published a public apology. More of a statement saying John is a tremendous artist with great personal vision and direction. The concept for the film was based on John's personal experiences and should not have been replicated. They say whilst we immediately took action and removed the local campaign version, we recognize that this was painful and that offense was caused. They say we respect John, and support our partners and fans globally. We are taking this misstep very seriously and we are working together as a brand to do better moving forward. So not many people know that Jo Malone herself is not involved in this brand anymore. She hasn't been since 1999. She was receiving a ton of personal hate comments, personal attacks through Instagram DMs. It was was a hellish time for her as well as John. She actually went on a morning talk show here in the UK called Lorraine. Lorraine is a national treasure if you don't know who she is. To kind of like not only say I'm not involved with this, this has nothing to do with me, but also to stick up for John and say, this is On the rain, she stated that she was horrified and disgusted by what the company had done to him. She directly addresses John and says if she was still involved with the company in any way, the Chinese version of advert would not have even been a conversation. It would not have been posted. It would not have even been created. After saying Joe Malone in 1999, she had her own battle with cancer. On the rain, she says that she was fighting for her life then, and now she's going to fight for her reputation. But more importantly, everything she believes in. She says that John wasn't only selling his face and his image, he was selling his his life story and the brand took full advantage of that and says how dare the brand treat him in that way. She says she doesn't feel like Joe Malone London's apology is enough and she says if anything is actually going to change the world we're living in people need to start taking real responsibility for their actions. And we see this often with uh, people of colour and black people when it comes to marketing and advertising in China. They're often removed from film posters, they're often removed from campaigns. You know racism within the beauty industry is a whole other video, it's a whole other Um, thing we need to go through. Speaking of which, let's talk about Fair and Lovely. So Fair and Lovely, if you don't know, is a skin lightening brand that was first introduced in India in 1975. Since then, they've expanded into loads of many other countries, and they are one of Unilever's biggest selling and profitable product lines. So before my skin dries out, I'm going to go in with Cosrx Sika Serum, Centella Asiatica Serum. This is just incredibly soothing, healing for my skin. This is a product that I will always have in my cupboards just to grab whenever my skin's gone to shit for some reason. Despite not selling in every country, Fair and Lovely is kind of a brand that is known throughout the world, mainly over here for their kind of like questionable adverts that's essentially often read as if you aren't white, you're not going to be successful. Here's a product to make you white. Oh look, now you're successful. With the brand often stating that you can make your skin fairer or whiter by using their natural ingredients. Some of the adverts are so obvious to me within their kind of like racist messaging of you have to be white um, to be successful. That's in many countries outside of where they sell. It comes across as almost like a dark humor parody of racism in the beauty world. It's, you, you can't help but laugh when you watch it because you're like, did I actually just watch, like, was that real? Did I just watch that? And whilst the adverts have become much less blatant with their messaging, there is still a massive outcry within the countries where they sell for these outdated products to be gone, basically, taken off the shelves. And it seems like the brand finally listened. Again, back in 2020, Fair and Lovely decided to change their brand name to Glow and Lovely. Just so you know, Fair and Handsome is a different brand owned by a completely different company. When announcing this name change, they stated that Fair and Lovely has never been and is not a skin bleaching product. Instead, it was intended to be a product which would improve skin barrier function, improve skin firmness and smooth out skin texture. So listen, I don't live in a country where they sell these products. I've not seen the adverts online, um, on TV ever, but I have seen them online. When I studied advertising photography, we did a lot about digital retouching and manipulation. And this was a subject that I was really interested in, the skin lightening and darkening skin within media to convey and portray a certain message. Fair and Lovely was of course, one of the main um, brands that I researched. Not once did I ever see the brand claim that this was what their brand is about. Skin barrier function, no one was using that term back then. In 2020 they were, but you know, like when no one was talking about skin like that. Anyway, some were thrilled by this news. Some saw it as a really positive step in the right direction with some tweeting, so happy to see Indian companies make a change in aspects that bring negative connotations to darker skin tones. Fair and Lovely is a cream that Indians know a lot about and use. So it's really nice seeing the company want to change the fair part to include everybody. Some people 
weren't that impressed though. And I kind of, I kind of, I'm on this side of the of the argument. Risha Sanwal, I think that's how I pronounce her name, sorry, is um, a documentarist based in Mumbai. And she said that she's grown up around these brands and these adverts and these terms whilst grown up in India. And she states that she does think it's a good symbolic message going in the right direction. However, she goes on to say that a lot of us aren't really entirely sure that it's really addressing the whole social stigma that comes with these creams. And essentially you're still selling a fairness cream. At this time, Glow and Lovely hadn't changed into Glow and Lovely. Nobody really knew what they were going to change their name to. Samuel goes on to say that just repackaging the product isn't really going to make that much of a big difference. You're still selling the same dream, just in different packaging. And I have to say, Glow is very different to fairness. It's a very different word. And the efforts created after the name change and going forward still didn't really reflect the change in attitude and the change in name. We're still seeing a skin color difference. We know that any skin color and tone can glow. So glow definitely isn't the right word to describe what they're trying to portray. This to me feels like a quick step in the what they want people to think is the right direction. It's a quick decision to prevent the brand being cancelled at the moment. But is a name change enough? I'm going to use an eye cream. This is the Oracle Reviving Eye Gel from Dew. Um, I'm just, it's just one of the only eye creams I can use around my eyes right now that gives it some hydration and calmness and soothing and is actually kind of helping with the inflammation and roughness. And there is a conversation again to be had here when it comes to culture. However, this isn't my conversation to be having. This isn't my culture. And you can watch Sam Wall's documentary. It's called In All Fairness, which is all about her personal story of colorism and basically growing up with people telling her that she needs fairer skin like the rest of the family. It's, it's a... It's a good watch, I highly recommend it. So I'm gonna go in with the Astura Atto Barrier 365 Cream. This is a barrier repairing cream for all the stuff I put my skin through recently. So here's one that's gonna piss me off. I believe the brand is pronounced Strix. So Strix is one of those for men brands that in my opinion still feel very like 2003. You know, when people are using the term metrosexual just because a man styled his hair a bit. I was gonna say popularity, but they're not really popular. They were on um, the TV show Shark Tank, which is the US equivalent of Dragon's Den. And the CEOs, the founders claim that this is the first for men beauty cosmetic brand to be formulated for men from start to finish. I don't believe that. I feel like that's a load of bull. Well, maybe the other brands, because the other four men brands are pretty much the same product. So maybe they're white labeled. So maybe, maybe they're telling the truth. I don't really know. This doesn't feel right though. So back in 2021, this very American brand decided to hit one of my favorite brands with a trademark violation. And you'll never guess what they're trying to trademark. You'll never guess what they said this other brand was violating their trademark with. Pimple patches. The word pimple patches. The product name, product type, pimple patches. Fucking idiots, honestly. <laughs> And they had singled out David Yee's Good Light brand and their Luna Pimple Patches as the brand to hit with this claim. And I'm not sure why. Let me just tell you a bit about David Yee. So David Yee is the founder of Good Light, which is a skincare brand, and Very Good Light, which is an online beauty platform. He is of South Korean heritage. And the author of one of the only books I've read from back to front called Pretty Boys. Um, I'm terrible at explaining things, but it's pretty much about the history of skincare, makeup, and cosmetics, and how it's used by many no men throughout history, in the culture, and how really, despite what people think nowadays, makeup and skincare has been a huge part of being for men. And really how makeup and cosmetics have been for men throughout history. It's always been used by men. Writing for likes of GQ, Vogue. What I'm trying to get at is David Yee knows a lot about the beauty industry and the beauty space in general. One of their products is the Luna Pimple Patches, which are made in South Korea. And we recognize these as we have done for many years. Most brands from Korea, uh, Japanese brands as well, will have their own form of pimple patch. However, they did initially raise in popularity because they were being sold and produced in Korea and K-Beauty took over. So imagine David Yee's surprise when an American brand, Strix, 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 tried to file the trademark claim against the word pimple patches. So here's the actions they wanted David Yee and Good Light to take. One, immediately cease and desist from all further use of infringing marks, including, but not limited to, removing the words pimple patches, irrespective of whether there's an additional design element from all of its online and physical stores, as well as any products that have not been yet sold. 
Two, recall all previously sold products that include the words pimple patches and provide the customer a version of the product with the word pimple patches removed. Three, destroy any materials in its possession or control bearing any designation likely to cause confusion with the pimple patches mark. Four, provide us with sufficient information to determine the full amount of Goodlight's gross revenues and profits derived from its use of the infringing mark. Five, promptly provide us with written confirmation that you will comply with these demands. As David Yee said in his tweets back then, pimple patches are mainly manufactured in South Korea, the international beauty capital of the world. Pimple patches is a ubiqu ubiquitous, I can't pronounce that, term for hydrocolloid dressings, also known as acne patches, blemish dots, pimple stickers, and were popularized due to Korean innovation. Strix manufactures their pimple patches in South Korea. My understanding is that none of Strix owners are Korean, but they are claiming ownership of innovation, popularized and made widely available by South Korea. Here they go, threatening to sue a South Korean brand founder over a product that is made in Korea. Like, well, I, I don't understand what the fuck they were thinking. Like, what the fuck? As David Yee states in some more tweets, this is like, this is a product category. You can't trademark a product category. It's like trying to trademark cleanser, toner, or essence. You can't do that. Like, why would you even try to do that? All that screams to me is that Strix don't really know about the beauty world. They don't really know what they're up against or who they're competing against or what is going on other than like, oh, we've made skincare for men. You can't honestly tell me that you're trying, you were trying to trademark Pimple Patch. Oh, I remember being so annoyed by this and so confused by this and it annoys me every single time. I just can't believe a, a cosmetics brand could be so out of touch with what's going on in their industry that they think they would have been able to get the trademark on Pimple Patch. And that's the thing. They didn't have this trademark. They had applied for the trademark. Hello, future me here. I'm just butting in here because since recording this using a VPN, um, non-sponsored, I found um, a statement, a more up-to-date statement from Strikes about what, what happened. But first of all, I want to read you their statement from around about the time this happened back in 2021. So Strikes, Strix, I forgot, it's been a week and I forgot how to pronounce it. They say, we'd like to address a topic that's received some recent attention online involving Strikes and another company, Good Light, concerning our trademark application for the use of the name Pimple Patches. We want to take this opportunity to clarify a few facts and correct some misunderstandings. We should note that we never took, nor at this time, intend to take any legal action against good light. If you know a little bit more about the law than me, which is everyone, maybe you can explain to me how that trademark violation threat type thing isn't legal action, or at least a threat of legal action, when they had a list of demands, because I'm not quite seeing the difference here, but let me know. I'm sure there's a, a technical difference. They go on to say, first, a little background. Back in April this year, months before we launched Pimple Patches, we researched the names so that we could not infringe on any similar products in the market. We then followed the pathway that all businesses do and saw it to trade market for strikes to use to protect our company from potential future liability. The trademark process is still pending. So yeah, they didn't have this trademark. They were filing it but decided to send a letter out being like, mm, you might want to get rid of all your pimple patches. It makes me wonder, they say that we did our research, and I wonder why they ended up deciding to file a trademark despite it being a product name, a product category, then deciding to try and trademark. That is very confusing. It does lead me to believe at the time they were very out of touch with what was going on in the skincare world, beyond their small bubble of four men cosmetics. They say we are a small business of just four employees, the same size as Good Light, and we put a tremendous amount of time, effort, research, and money into launching pimple patches in mid-October mid of this year. So they know about Good Light's um, business makeup. They know they're a small business. They know they're just a number, a small number of employees. Yet they decided to pretty much try and destroy part of their business, in my opinion. About a week or so after we launched Pimple Patches, we learned that Good Light released a product using a very similar name. 
Goodlight and many other brands, which they should have seen in their research, right? We reached out to Goodlight with a standard cease and desist letter, as would any company with a pending trademark application. Which sounds weird to me. Why would you? I don't know. Maybe that's just how it's done. Goodlight responded with a legal letter saying they disagreed with our position and would disregard our claim entirely. Fine. Following Goodlight's response, we made multiple attempts to speak with the company's founder directly to try and resolve the situation. Regrettably, these requests as of writing this have gone unanswered. Our invitation to discuss this and have a constructive dialogue with Goodlight still stands as we would like to clear the air, but we reiterate that either way, we have no intention of pursuing any further action at this time, meaning they could potentially. Um, good light, owe them nothing. I think they actually did the right thing by not having any personal contact. Recently, we learned of some hurtful comments Good Light made about our company on certain social media platforms. We <laughs> are a small, ethnically diverse company that cares deeply about our customers, our employees, and the rights of all companies compete and succeed in the marketplace. There is room and opportunity for a small cosmetics business to develop products that help consumers look and feel their very best. This is my very personal opinion. It's not just enough to say, oh, we tick every box as far as diversity goes. We have one of every skin color and skin tone. There's queer people working for us. We have a good mix of men and women. It's about understanding why, for example, you shouldn't try and file a trademark against a brand owned by someone of South Korean heritage trying to trademark a product, a term that was made popular in South Korea. It's about understanding why you need to be diverse and appreciating and knowing about other cultures in the business that you are in. It's just not enough to say we're diverse and tick a few boxes. In my very personal opinion, some online have taken issue with our attempt to even obtain a trademark. Yes, this decision is ultimately up to the US Patent and Trademark Office, whose job it is to make such de de determinations. We took great care to research the name thoroughly and we follow the appropriate steps to file our trademark application. We believe we have good standing, but the very reason we have a trademark application process is so that these issues may be properly vetted and considered. This says to me, well, it's legal. Technically it's legal and technically we're allowed to do it. So we're gonna do it anyway. So for the rest of you, the mission of Strix and Good Light are aligned in helping more people around the world be their most comfortable and confident selves. We want to ensure both businesses can succeed and thrive. Nothing would make us happier. In my personal opinion, I do not believe them. I think if you truly believe that that was at the core of your business, like it is to Good Light, then you wouldn't do something to another company who you know is a small business, just like you. So this is where I'm updating because there's been an article since where Elizabeth N.G. Glock, the head of operations and owner of Strix, and an owner of Strix, strikes, I'm so sorry, I forgot, it's been a long week, spoke to nextshark.com about this legal scuffle. So Glock admitted that sending the cease and desist letter was heavy handed and a misstep, and that they immediately backed off their original stance. Glock says Strix was following Strix. Glock says Strix was following the advice of their attorneys and at the time. We're a small business too, Glock wrote. We're learning from our mistakes. We're trying to make this right. We can't grow and learn without conversations and forgiveness. That's nice to hear and I appreciate that they understand what they did was wrong and kind of weird, a misstep in their own words. But I do stand by the fact that even if you were following the legal advice of your attorney, you are still so far removed from what's going on in the beauty industry that it doesn't even cross your mind to be like, hold on a minute, attorney, who probably doesn't understand the cosmetics business in a way that we do beyond legal implications and stuff and be like hang on no we can't do that because pimple patch is a product type it's a product category they could have been like mm, attorney that's not a very sensible idea that's actually a bit weird again they said they've done a ton of research but it does make me consider how much research did they do really out of what's out there that is missing for men you know research outside of their own niche but you know, we like a brand that learns from their mistakes. Hopefully this is a good example of what other brands shouldn't be trying to do, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right. Finally, I'm gonna apply the Cicaplast Balm um, just to help repair my skin everything that's going on. Now well, I have a feeling it might've just been the sheer amount of different sunscreens I tried in like one week back when I did that sunscreen video. But yeah, it was, it was strange to me and this is what I mean when I talk about brands, like you want to be liked as a brand. People care what your views are. People care what your ethics are as brands nowadays. And if you're going around trying to bring down small businesses and trying to trademark a product that was made popular by South Korean skincare, then you're filing a trademark, um, what they call lawsuit, whatever it's called, against 
a brand that is made in South Korea and created by somebody who is of South Korean heritage. You obviously don't care. You obviously don't care. Strange. Anyway, let me know what you think about these in the comments down below. This was meant to be like a six part, um, six stories, but I only got through three because um, I'm tired now. <laughs> let me know if you remember any of these stories and what you think about them. Cause honestly, that last one pissed me off and it always does. They all pissed me off. They all kind of like, they always bring up these like conversations in my head and these like, I don't understand the thinking of any brands. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You can watch some more uh, general like entertainment here and some other stuff here and I'll see you next time.